This is 7.4 Nerve Physiology Notes. The essential question is, what are the steps involved in a nerve impulse traveling down a neuron, and what are the parts of a reflex arc? Potential is the difference in charge between the outside and the inside of this nerve cell that is caused by a difference in the uh, ions, specifically sodium, uh, chloride, and potassium that are in the cell. A resting membrane potential is a state where there is no nerve impulse traveling down the axon of the neuron and it is, the nerve is said to be inactive or at rest. During this time, the charge inside the nerve cell is negative 70 due to the fact that there are more sodium ions, which are positive ions, on the outside compared to the number of potassium on the inside. So when you have more positive ions on the outside compared to the inside, you're going to have a negative charge. Because of this negative charge, that resting potential, it is termed the, the nerve is polarized, which means that there is a charge. Polar refers to a charge. So when there is a charge to the nerve, it is considered polarized. During an action potential means that there is a nerve impulse down, traveling down the neuron and that something has the charge, that polarization has been offset. And the reason why this happens is because of changes that we discussed in the last unit, those sodium channels opening up, the sodium starts rushing in. And when that sodium starts rushing in, the inside the neurons becomes more positive and goes towards um, a zero voltage. And this is what, be, so what happens to the nerve is it becomes unpolarized. The word to mean unpolarized is depolarization. So when you see the word depolarization means that at rest the neuron is polarized. It has a charge. But because the sodium is rushing in, it is going toward to zero, which means there is no longer a charge. That's why it's called depolarization. Eventually what's going to happen is that the sodium will, enough of the sodium will rush into the neuron that the plus, the negative 70, is going to start going more positive towards zero. This is where they get the word depolarization. Depolarization means at rest it was polarized, it has a charge, now it's going towards zero where there is no charge, so it's being depolarized, depolarization. Eventually, that the, because of the rushing of sodium, the charge is going to continuously come up to plus 30 voltage. At that point, there is an action potential and there is a nerve impulse traveling down the axon. Next, as soon as the plus 30 volt is reached and action potential has happened, then what's going to happen is now the sodium channels are closed and the potassium channels are open and the potassiums are going to start rushing out. They're going to keep going out. Because they're going out, what's going to happen is that plus 30 now is going to go slowly back down to zero, pass back down, and then it goes slightly below negative 70 to a little bit and then it will eventually it will level off, but it will go back to being negative. That's what we call repolarization because we are going back to being polarized again. So there's polarization. At rest, there is a positive, a negative 70 charge. Then it goes toward zero to plus 30. That is depolarization. An action potential happens. And then when it goes back down to negative 70 or below negative 70 and then level off to negative 70, that's repolarization because now you are again polarized. There are different types of responses. The most common one is described as all or none response, which means that there will either, well, either be a nerve impulse, uh, nerve electrical impulse going down the axon, 
or there isn't going to be. If the charge does not hit plus 30 volt, then there will be no nerve impulse. Nothing will happen. It has to reach plus 30 for something to happen. That's all or none. Summation occurs when another stimulus, remember stimulus is the cause of all this, uh, is another stimulus comes in while before the other stimulus wears off, there is going to be an additive effect. The one effect is going to come, um, build on top of the other one. That's called summation. Greater response means that the stronger stimulus it is, then it's going to stimulate more nerves, which means you're going to have a stronger response. Refractory period is the time between one stimulus and action potential has happened and that time where the cell is going back to, it's being repolarized, going back to the negative 70, that the another in stimulus, even if there is another stimulus, it cannot create another action potential. There are two types of conductions. There is a continuous conduction, which means there is an action potential that is happening every space along every inch of the axon. And this occurs in an unmyelinated axon, which means that it doesn't have that extra layer on top of the axon. Then there is the saltatory conduction, which means that there is an ac there is a myelin along the axon and the nerve impulse, instead of going along every part of the axon, it jumps from one node of RAMV8 to another. So here is a diagram of a continuous conduction, which means that all along, along the, the nerve, there is a nerve impulse exchange of the uh, ions going back and forth. This is continuous. So it's going to take a lot of times for this to occur. And notice the direction of the impulse is going down the axon, which means the cell body is on this side and the axonal terminal is on this side. And that's the direction of it's going to flow. In a saltatory conduction, meaning that there is a myelin along the axon, and then the only places that are not, um, that there is no myelin, those are called node of Ranvier. In those areas, there is no myelin. And those are the only areas where an actual conduction of nerve occurs. So instead of a continuous movement all the way down the axon, what's going to happen is the nerve impulse is going to jump to this node of MVA, to the next row, row, node of MVA, next, and next. So what's happening is instead of going across, walking along the axon, you are hopping along the axon. So neurons with the myelin is going to have a much faster conduction along that axon because they're jumping from one to the other. Whereas the, salt, uh, the continuous is much slower because you have to go all the way across the entire axon. Whereas saltatory, you are jumping. Synapse is a junction between a neuron and another neuron or neuron and an effect organ, neuron and a muscle, but it is a a space where there is no connection between one nerve and something else. And when we talk about a connection between two nerves, the nerve that comes before, because we're talking about before meaning the bef where the impulse starts and where the impulse is going. So the neuron where the impulse is coming from is called the presynaptic neuron, which means pre means it's coming before the synapse. Whereas postsynaptic neuron means that it comes after. So nerve impulse is going to travel from the presynaptic neuron and then move over to the postsynaptic neuron. Again, recall that when the nerve impulse travels down the axon on the presynaptic neuron, when it reaches the synaptic bulb, it's going to really uh, open up the calcium channels. Calcium is important in allowing the synaptic vesicle to fuse the cell membrane of the neuron, the synaptic vesicle to fuse with the cell membrane of the neuron, and then it releases the neurotransmitter into the synaptic cleft.
then the neurotransmitter is going to bind to the receptors on the postsynaptic neuron. There are many different, about 30 to 50 different neurotransmitters that are identified that works in the nervous system. And you know of one, acetylcholine, you know that work with the skeletal muscles. And the synaptic involved can contain two different neuron, uh, neurotransmitters. And the key is that, remember, that neurotransmitter must bind to the receptor on the postsynaptic neuron, which means if the pieces don't fit like puzzle pieces, then they can't work. There are two different types of conduction of nerves, from synapse. So you notice that the direction of the flow of nerve impulse is going from here. So this would be considered your presynaptic neuron, and these are your postsynaptic neuron. Okay, and the connection is here. Here is the axon here that are in contact with the dendrites of the next. So axonal terminal of one neuron is binding to the axonal terminal of another. This is called the divergent neuron because you are starting up with one presynaptic neuron and they branch to two different uh, neurons, postsynaptic neurons. In the uh, convergent neuron, you start off with two neuron, two presynaptic pre neurons, and they're going to send their information converge into one neuron, which is your postsynaptic. So here's your presynaptic before the synapse and the postsynaptic, which is after the synapse. Reflex is an automatic rapid movement that does not require any thinking. A reflex arc is made up of a sensory neuron, which detects information coming in. That information usually will go up to the spinal cord and up to the brain, and then it will then synapse through the interneuron and then come back down to the motor neuron. And then the motor neuron will come, uh, carry the information and carry out the action, uh, carry out the information that the effector will then take the action of. But the reason why reflexes are much faster than normal responses is that the reflex completely bypasses the brain. So it saves time because that information doesn't have to travel all the way up to the brain. Then you have to think about the problem, integrate the information, and carry out a, a response to it. A reflex is already programmed. Once the information comes in, your spinal cord basically knows what information to send out right away. So it's an automatic response. A reflex is a good thing to have or a reflex arc is a good thing to have in an emergency situation. So let's say you uh, put your hand down on a thumbtack. Well, that information is going to send, your sensory neurons are going to send pain information through the sensory neuron to the spinal cord. Okay. Usually, if it was a normal sensory information, that information will go all the way up to the brain, and then you have to think about it, hey, you know, I just stubbed my hand, it hurts, you should do something about it, then you have to brain have to think about it, and then, okay, I think maybe I should move my hand away, and then, you know, send the information back down, then it has to carry. But in a reflex arc, you already know that when certain kind of pain fight information comes in, then that information is going to just synapse or connect with the interneuron in the spinal cord, then the next movement is, instead of going up to the brain, it will automatically send out information to the, or an action, a message, to the motor neuron, to the effector organ, and in this case, the effector organ is a muscle to saying, get your finger, your hand away from the the thumbtack that's causing you pain. So that's an automatic response. Notice sometimes that when you uh, are about to touch something hot, you kind of pull away from it before you even touch it is because you already know that the um, it's going to be dangerous. So anytime you are in an emergency situation, then the reflex, uh, the reflex kicks in to get you out of the situation without having to think about it.
7.4 notes homework. Number one, how is an action potential reached from a resting potential? Number two, what does depolarization and repolarization mean? Number three, what is the purpose of a reflex?